Welcome. I'd really appreciate if you could drop a comment with your thoughts and reactions as you listen. Your feedback helps me craft better stories for you. Ryan stared at his laptop screen, fingers hovering hesitantly over the keyboard. The dating site's minimalist interface stared back, a stark contrast to the colorful chaos of mainstream apps. He had resisted joining for months, but the loneliness was becoming unbearable. At least here, people sought real human connection instead of superficial matches. His analytical mind appreciated the direct approach. No games. Just honesty. After typing a brief self-summary, focusing on his interests, not insecurities, Ryan began browsing profiles. Most were similarly sparse, prioritizing substance over style. He paused on a woman called Lily. Her photo showed intense eyes and an enigmatic smile, intriguing yet guarded. The profile contained just a few words. Seeking depth over small talk but it resonated. Ryan sent a message introducing himself and asking what book she enjoyed. To his surprise, a response arrived within hours. Lily's replies were brief yet thoughtful, discussing literature that explored humanity's shadows. Ryan found himself drawn into a fluid debate, impressed by her perceptiveness. They continued messaging through the night losing track of time as their discussion wandered from books to philosophy. Lily challenged Ryan's analytical viewpoints without judgment, peeling back his defenses with compassions. By dawn, he felt truly seen for the first time. Over the next few days, their exchanges grew more personal. Ryan opened up about his isolated childhood and difficulty connecting to others. Lily listened without pity sharing bits about her own journey without revealing details. Her vagueness should have concerned Ryan, but only deepened the mystery. Finally, Lily suggested meeting in person. Ryan's anxiety spiked at the prospect of a real encounter after weeks behind screens. What if she found him disappointing? But the pull of her charm was irresistible. On the agreed day, Ryan arrived early at their local cafe, scanning the patrons nervously. Then Lily walked in and he froze. She was more striking in reality, carrying an aura that commanded attention. As they sat down, Ryan's analytical mind kicked in, observing Lily's posture, tone, and word choices for clues. But she seemed at ease, meeting his gaze with calm intensity. I'm glad we could move our discussion into the real world, she said with a smile. Ryan relaxed slightly, drawn in by her presence. Over coffee, their conversation flowed as naturally as online, touching on philosophy, art, and current affairs. Lily listened intently to Ryan, understanding him in a way no one else had bothered to before. When he asked about her past, Lily gave a cryptic answer. We all have our private journeys. I prefer focusing on the present. Ryan accepted this, too enthralled to push further and risk disrupting their report. As they parted ways, Ryan felt lighter than he had in years. Lily's number was now in his phone and the promise of future meetings. For the first time, he dared to believe he had found real human connection. Over the next few weeks, Ryan and Lily's meetings became a regular fixture. They explored the city together, visiting museums, parks, and cafes off the beaten path. Ryan found himself opening up more each time, sharing childhood anecdotes and introspective thoughts he'd never voiced aloud. Lily listened without judgment, offering insights that soothed his anxieties. Her presence had a calming effect, easing Ryan out of his analytical shell. In turn, Lily remained an enigma. She deflected questions about her family or career with vague smiles. Ryan accepted this, respecting her privacy while enjoying their report. Her guarded nature only added mystique to her charm. One evening, they wandered along the riverfront as dusk fell. Ryan described coding a new project, gesturing animatedly. Lily watched him with a soft smile, appreciating his passion. As they sat on a bench, Ryan felt a surge of affection and leaned in to kiss her. Lily responded warmly before pulling back. Not yet she said gently. We have time.
There's no need to rush. Ryan nodded, embarrassed by his eagerness, but understanding her caution. They continued their walk in comfortable silence. Over the following days, Ryan found himself growing paranoid. Strange things kept happening. A missed call with no caller ID. Footsteps outside his apartment late at night. He began noticing a dark sedan parked near his usual haunts with Lily. At first, Ryan dismissed his suspicions as anxiety. But the incidents escalated. His laptop camera turned on randomly. Files on his desktop rearranged themselves. He started taking alternate routes to meet Lily, constantly scanning for followers. When he mentioned this to Lily at their next meeting, she remained calm. You're overthinking, she said soothingly. It's likely a technical glitch or coincidence. But her reassurance did little to ease Ryan's nerves. Why wasn't she more concerned about a potential stalker? The doubts gnawed at Ryan. He began researching Lily's name online in spare moments, digging for clues to her past. But he found nothing substantial. Just a few social media profiles with minimal activity from years ago. It was as if she had appeared from nowhere recently. His frustration grew as Lily continued deflecting questions. One evening during a long walk, Ryan confronted her. I care about you, Lily, but I need to understand what's happening, he pleaded. Her expression darkened, an emotion Ryan couldn't place flickering in her eyes. You don't need to know everything about me, she said coldly before walking away. Ryan watched her leave, torn between pursuing her and respecting her privacy. He decided to give Lily space, hoping their bond could withstand this tension. But that night, an anonymous text message arrived. I'm watching you. Ryan stared at it numbly. The stalker's threat sinking in at cold sweat broke out. Who was following them? And how much did they know? The next morning, Ryan woke with a start. Someone was in his apartment. He crept towards the living room, bracing for an encounter. But the space was empty. On his laptop screen, a message blinked. See you soon. Ryan broke into a cold sweat, his sense of safety shattered. Someone had invaded his home without a trace. As he sat shaking, Ryan realized the truth was no longer avoidable. He had to uncover who was stalking them before it was too late. But to do so, he would need to venture into the shadows of Lily's mysterious past himself. Ryan spent the day in a paranoid daze, jumping at every small sound. He replayed his encounters with Lily, scrutinizing every word for clues he'd missed. As night fell, Ryan steeled his resolve to get answers, even if it meant confronting Lily's secrets alone. He started by searching public records for any information on her full name, to no avail. Frustrated, Ryan then hacked into the dating site's database, sifting through deleted profiles and messages. A glimmer of hope emerged. Another user had messaged Lily years ago, mentioning a past we share. Ryan tracked down the man's social media, discovering he now lived in a nearby town. Under the guise of a research interview, Ryan arrived at his home unannounced. The man eyed him, warily but agreed to talk, on the condition of anonymity. He told Ryan about meeting Lily shortly after a traumatic incident that made local headlines years ago. Two people had gone missing from a hiking group Lily led. Their bodies were later found in the woods, ruled as animal attacks despite suspicious wounds. Lily was a person of interest, but never charged. She then vanished without a trace. The man admitted to growing obsessed with the beautiful yet troubled Lily, only for her to disappear again after their brief romance. Ryan left more disturbed than when he'd arrived. Could Lily really be connected to those deaths? He needed to confront her, yet calling or visiting seemed too risky without backup. That night, Ryan staked out Lily's apartment from a hidden position. Around midnight, a figure slipped out and hurried down the street. Ryan followed at a distance as Lily wove through back alleys, clearly trying to lose a tail. She eventually entered an abandoned warehouse, and Ryan crept up to peer inside. To his shock, Lily was embracing another person in the shadows, the stalker who had terrorized them, 
Rage and betrayal surged through Ryan as he burst inside, demanding answers. But before anyone could react, a dark van screeched up outside. Armed men spilled out and rushed towards the warehouse. In the chaos, Ryan lost sight of Lily and the stalker. He fled deeper into the maze of corridors, hearing shouts and gunshots echo behind him. Emerging onto a catwalk, Ryan froze at the sight below. Lie grappling with one of the men, his gun leveled at her head. With no time to think, Ryan launched himself at them from above. The three crashed to the floor in a tangled heap. As Ryan rolled off dazed, he found himself staring down the barrel of a second man's gun. Behind him, Lily lay motionless in a growing pool of blood. His pursuit of truth had spiraled disastrously out of control. The dark web marketplace was a maze of depravity. Julia scrolled endlessly, her stomach churning at each new horror that flashed across the screen. She had seen enough to know this underground world peddled in things no person should ever experience. But to expose the truth, one had to wade into the filth. Pasting in her custom Bitcoin wallet address, Julia sent a small payment to an anonymous vendor advertising exotic goods. Now she waited, her cover depending on what kind of response this elicited. It was a dangerous game she played, but the lives of innocent people were at stake. She had to find the real puppet masters pulling the strings in this place. It didn't take long before a private message pinged in her inbox. Only a single word appeared. Interested, Julia steeled herself, typing out her reply with steady fingers. Tell me more. Moments later, photos appeared, showing terrified young women locked in a bare room. Julia's stomach turned, but she made herself study every pixel, memorizing each face in hopes of one day saving them. Below, a price list detailed the services one could purchase from this modern slave market. It was all Julia could do not to be sick. A call came through, the voice distorted and anonymous. I understand you're... Tastes run darker. We aim to please all customers. Perhaps a private viewing could be arranged. Julia took a shaky breath, knowing this might be her only chance to locate these monsters in the real world. Name your terms, she said, her voice betraying none of the revulsion churning within. The meeting was set for that night, the location an abandoned warehouse on the city's outskirts. As Julia ended the call, she sent out an encrypted message to her contact in the local police force, Detective Marcus Brown. He was the only one who knew the full extent of her investigation into the dark web's human trafficking networks. Now she had a chance to infiltrate the highest ranks, but she would need backup, fast. Marcus received the message and sighed, rubbing a hand over his tired eyes. Julia Roberts was the best lead they had ever gotten into these syndicates. But going in alone was too dangerous, even for her. He would have to shadow her meeting undercover to ensure her safety, without blowing his own covert identity within the local gangs. It had been two years since Marcus first went undercover to avenge his sister's death at the hands of human traffickers. Now, he was close to the top working to dismantle the entire criminal organization from within. But keeping up the charade was wearing him down. Every depraved act he witnessed chipped away more of his humanity. He could only pray this meeting would bring them one step closer to finally ending this nightmare. That evening, Julia parked her nondescript sedan down the block from the warehouse. Checking her concealed weapon was in place. She had no backup and no real plan if things went south but she was determined not to let fear stop her from getting the truth, whatever the cost. Taking a steadying breath, Julia stepped out into the gathering dusk and started toward the rendezvous point, alone. Unseen in the shadows, Marcus watched her go from his own vehicle, cursing under his breath. Julia was in over her head, and he would do anything to protect her, even if she didn't know it, donning his role like a well-worn mask. Marcus slipped from the car and followed Julia into the lion's den, keeping to the darkness as a second set of eyes on their target. Inside, the game was afoot. The warehouse was cavernous and empty. 
save for a lone figure standing in the center, beneath a dim utility light. As Julia approached, the man turned to face her, features obscured by a hood. You've come alone, I see. Brave. Or foolish. I'm here for business, said Julia calmly. The man gestured for her to follow. Julia fell in step, senses on high alert beneath her practiced facade. They walked deeper into the vast space, shadows crowding in from all sides. Julia struggled to pierce the darkness for any signs of Marcus or the trafficker's true operation. Finally, they reached a nondescript metal door. The man rapped out a coded knock, and it swung open, blinding light spilling out. Julia blinked away spots to find a modern lounge beyond, jarringly luxurious amid the dank surroundings. A group of well-dressed men and women sat chatting over drinks, faces turning in appraisal as Julia entered. Her contact pulled back his hood, revealing aristocratic features and a cold smile. Gentlemen, a potential new investor. Treat her well. With that, he vanished, leaving Julia exposed under the predatory gazes. She steeled herself, playing the role of interested buyer. I must say, I'm impressed by the operation so far. Discretion is key in my line of work. The others laughed, easing Julia into their midst. She schmoozed and charmed, plying them for any useful details amid casual conversation. But they were cagey, guarding the true scope of their syndicate. Just then, a commotion erupted outside the lounge. Gunshots rang out and angry shouts echoed through the cavernous space. Julia's heart leapt into her throat as the traffickers leapt into action, drawing concealed weapons. Her contact reappeared, face contorted with rage. We've been compromised. Kill the intruder and get our assets to the extraction point, now. The group surged into action. Julia was grabbed and dragged along, gun pressed to her back. She struggled frusely, fearing for Marcus's life. As they burst from the lounge, she saw him engaged in a fierce firefight, further down the vast warehouse floor. Their eyes met for an instant across the chaos. Marcus's widened in alarm, seeing Julia's predicament. With a roar, he redoubled his efforts, cutting down the last trafficker between them in a spray of blood. Let her go now, Marcus bellowed, training his weapon on Julia's captor. The man snarled but complied, shoving Julia roughly aside before melting into the shadows. Julia scrambled to Marcus, heart pounding. We have to stop them. They're moving the girls. Without a word, Marcus grabbed her hand and they gave chase. But the traffickers had the advantage of numbers and territory. By the time Julia and Marcus burst into the night, the warehouse was empty. Their quarry had vanished once more into the dark. Back at the police station, Marcus paced like a caged animal as Julia recounted the night's events. Damn it, we were so close. Now the trail is cold again. He raked a hand through his hair in frustration. Not necessarily, said Julia, eyes alight. I got a good look at their leader. With a sketch artist, maybe we can ID him. Marcus paused, regarding her with new respect. You held your own in there. Brave work, Roberts. Julia smiled wryly. We make a good team, detective. Together, perhaps we stand a chance of bringing these monsters down for good. Marcus nodded slowly, the ghost of a smile touching his lips. Together then, I'll get you to the sketch artist and Roberts. Call me Marcus. Weeks passed as Julia and Marcus worked tirelessly to identify the trafficker boss from Julia's sketch. They hit dead end after dead end, the man seemingly a ghost, but his underling's operation continued apace in the city's dark corners. One night, Marcus received a tip from one of his criminal contacts. A major handoff was going down that week. This could lead them to the boss at last. He called Julia at once to plan an undercover sting. They spent days preparing, going over every detail to minimize risk. On the night, Marcus took his place among the low-level thugs while Julia watched from a hidden position, ready to move in with up-up at the first sign of trouble. The exchange began, 
goods and money changing hands in a seedy alleyway. But something was off. The traffickers were more jumpy than usual, constantly looking over their shoulders. Julia's sense of unease grew as Marcus drew closer, listening for any clue. Suddenly, shots rang out, echoing between the buildings. Julia cried out in alarm over the comms as Marcus and the others hit the deck. When the smoke cleared, all the traffickers lay dead, killed by a professional sniper from above. It was an ambush, meant to cover their tracks. Julia and Marcus raced from their positions, scanning rooftops for any sign of the assassin to no avail. Their one lead was gone, and now their lives were in danger too from this shadowy new threat. Days later, Marcus received another call from his contact. The trafficker boss wanted a meeting, alone, to discuss business. It was clearly a trap, but they had no choice. That night, Marcus went to the rendezvous, every sense on high alert beneath his disguise. He was grabbed and thrown into a dark van before he could react. A bag went over his head as the vehicle sped away. When it stopped, Marcus was dragged inside a building and thrown to the floor before the boss. I know you're a cop, the man said coldly. Your cover is blown. Marcus said nothing. Mind racing. How could this happen? The boss continued. You and that reporter have caused me too much trouble. Consider this your termination. Gunmen appeared on either side of Marcus as the boss turned to leave. In that moment, Julia burst through a side door with her weapon drawn. Let him go now, she shouted. The boss whirled in surprise. You, he hissed. A tense standoff ensued. Guns trained on all sides as Julia and Marcus faced their greatest foe at last. But could they survive this final confrontation? Or would the truth die with them in this dark place? The boss smiled coldly. Kill them both. Kill them both. Chaos erupted as gunfire exploded through the room. Julia and Marcus dove for cover, returning fire amid a deadly dance. Bullets ricocheted in the confined space as they fought for their lives. Through the smoke, Julia saw her chance and took the shot. The trafficker boss crumpled with a cry of pain, clutching his bleeding shoulder. His men faltered at the loss of leadership. In that moment, Marcus disarmed the last gunman with a well-placed blow. Sirens wailed in the distance as backup closed in. It was over. Julia rushed to Marcus's side, embracing him in relief as flashing lights swarmed the building. At long last, their tireless quest for justice was done. The truth was exposed for all to see. In the aftermath, the scope of the syndicate's crimes were laid bare, implicating figures even in high levels of government. Julia's expose rocked the city and beyond. As for Marcus, with his cover blown, he finally shed his criminal guise, free at last from the ghosts of his past. Standing together in the dawn light, Julia took Marcus's hand. A new chapter was beginning for them both. Though the road had been dark, in the end, they found the truth. And in each other as well. Their partnership had prevailed against even the deepest darkness. And for the victims, it was a victory for all. Emily pulled her coat tighter as she walked the winding forest path. Fog swirled between the trees like ghostly fingers grasping at her. She tried to ignore the sense of being watched from the shadows, focusing instead on the cracked pavement underfoot. According to her research, the old Miller house lay just over a mile into these woods. She had come alone, not wanting to involve anyone else until she knew what, or who, she might find. Her flashlight cut only a narrow swath through the misty gloom. A branch snapped in the distance, and Emily whirled, heart pounding. But the beam revealed only empty space between the skeletal trees. She scolded herself. This place was getting to her, making her jumpy at every small noise. Ever since discovering that dark web forum, Emily had felt uneasy. The rituals described there seemed too real, too detailed to be mere fantasy. She needed to know if any truth lay behind the sinister claims. But infiltrating such a community alone was dangerous. That's why she had agreed to partner with Alex, 
a fellow paranormal investigator and avowed skeptic. His analytical mind could help discern real threats from mere superstition. And with his help, perhaps they could expose the forum for what it likely was. Just another internet hoax preying on people's fears. Emily checked the time on her phone. Alex was late. Not like him at all. She sent another text, growing more anxious by the minute. This isolated forest setting was playing perfectly into her overactive imagination. Just as she was about to call him, footsteps sounded behind her. Emily whirled with a gasp, flashlight beam landing on a familiar face. Alex, you scared me half to death. He held up his hands apologetically. Sorry, traffic was hell getting out here. This place is really in the middle of nowhere. His breath fogged in the chill air as he scanned their surroundings. So, this is the fabled Miller Woods, huh? Emily nodded, regaining her composure. According to local legends, the Miller family who lived in that house way back when were involved in some pretty dark occult practices. Strange lights, noises, even reports of ritualistic symbols found carved into the trees. The whole place gets blamed for any weird happenings in the area. Sounds like the perfect setup for local ghost stories. Alex pulled out a imp meter, switching it on to check for electromagnetic fields. But I'm sure there's a rational explanation for all of it. Still, we should be careful poking around an abandoned house at night. Old structures can be unstable. He peered into the misty gloom. They continued down the winding path. Emily tried to ignore the prickling on the back of her neck, telling herself it was just overactive imagination. But as the trees grew thicker, cutting off even the faint glow of distant streetlights, she found herself walking closer to Alex. Whatever they might find in those woods, at least she wasn't facing it alone. As Emily and Alex emerged from the forest, the looming silhouette of an old Victorian manor rose before them. Crooked windows stared like empty eye sockets from a weathered gray facade. Broken shutters flapped in the wind like tattered wings. Well, here we are, Alex said grimly. The infamous Miller House. He shone his flashlight across peeling paint and crumbling stone. The place looked even more run. Down up close, nature reclaiming what was once a grand estate. Emily's light picked out faded occult symbols etched into the rotting wood. Pentagrams, sigils, and stranger geometries that made her skin crawl. Let's do a perimeter check first before going inside, Alex suggested. Stay sharp and watch your step. This place could cave in any second. They circled the house, beams cutting through long grass and weeds. Strange artifacts emerged. Shattered bottles, rusted tools, even bones that may have been animal or human. The back door hung precariously from a single hinge. As Alex examined it, Emily's light fell upon a small altar nestled in a copse of trees. Candles, feathers, and what looked disturbingly like dried blood. Dried blood stained the weathered stone. A chill ran through her that had nothing to do with the misty air. Emily. Over here, Alex called from inside. She hurried to his side, finding him in a dilapidated parlor. His light revealed a message scrawled on a wall in what looked horribly like fresh blood. Turn back before the doors open. What the hell? Emily breathed, fear and revulsion rising in her throat. This place was far more sinister than any normal decay could explain. Alex ran his fingers over the grisly words, bringing them away clean. Strange. It's just paint, thankfully. But why would anyone leave a warning like this? Before Emily could answer, a loud creak echoed from the floor above. They froze, exchanging a worried look. Hello, Alex called, but only silence answered. He hefted his inf meter. I'm getting some anomalous readings. Let's check it out carefully. Clutching charms in her pocket for comfort, Emily followed him up the rotting staircase. Their light swept dust, filled rooms holding remnants of former lives. A child's toy, tattered books, moldy curtains, swaying, 
as if recently disturbed. The creaking led them to a bedroom overlooking the backyard. As Alex scanned for its source, Emily's light fixed upon a message scrawled on the far wall, identical to the one below. She gasped, stumbling back into Alex's arms. It's here, she whispered through numb lips. Whatever was warning people away, it's still in this house. A bone-chilling howl rose behind them, shaking dust from the ceiling. They spun to see a hulking shadow at the end of the hall, a gaping maw filled with dagger, like teeth. Yellow eyes blazed with malevolent hunger. Run, Alex shouted, shoving Emily ahead of him. They plunged down the stairs as crashing footsteps pursued. A splintering sound heralded the monster's descent. Emily risked a glance back to see a misshapen form, too canine to be human, yet too large, emerge from the swirling dust. They burst from the house into the yard, lungs burning. But as they turned to slam the door shut, a nightmarish sight met their eyes through a shattered window. The rooms they had just fled were empty, undisturbed. No sign of the hellish beast that had chased them from the house. Emily's light fell upon a final message, as if in mocking reply to the question in her eyes. Some doors are better left closed. Emily and Alex stood frozen in the yard, heart pounding. The house before them remained silent and still. It's not possible, Alex said hoarsely. We both saw it, felt it chasing us. Emily could only nod numbly. Whatever entity inhabited this place, it defied rational explanation. A chill far deeper than the mist seeped into her bones. We need to get out of here, she said, now. They fled back into the misty woods not stopping until the house was lost from sight behind them. Leaning against a tree to catch her breath, Emily noticed strange symbols carved into the bark, the same occult geometries she had seen etched into the house. She shone her light further and froze in horror. The trees were covered from root to crown in esoteric patterns, as if the entire forest was part of some dark ritual. Alex, look at this. His light joined hers, revealing the full scope of the blasphemous designs. This whole place is saturated with dark energy. Whatever the Millers summoned, it's still feeding off these woods. He ran a hand over his face, the rational skeptic in him at a loss. I don't know. Um, but we're in over our heads here. We need to get help. As he pulled out his phone, they heard a rustling further in the woods. Emily swung her light and gasped. Two glowing orbs stared back at them from the shadows, too high off the ground to be an animal. The entity let out an unearthly howl that curdled their blood. They ran, the pounding of heavy paws gaining behind them. Branches whipped Emily's face as she fled blindly through the maze of trees. Suddenly, the ground vanished beneath her feet. She screamed as she tumbled down a steep ravine, rocks and roots tearing at her flesh. Her light went out on impact, leaving her in absolute blackness. Emily! Alex shouted frantically above. Are you all right? His light swept the ravine, finding her crumpled at the bottom. Thank God. Hold on. I'll find a way. His words cut off in a gurgled cry. Emily screamed his name, fumbling for her phone with shaking hands. The glow revealed Alex suspended ten feet above, throat gripped in massive jaws as he kicked futilely against empty air. With a sickening crunch, his light went dark. Emily curled into a ball, sobbing in utter terror. She was alone in the pitch-black woods with a monster that could defy all logic. No way to escape the ravine or call for help. Her end was inevitable. As resignation set in, a new light bloomed above two glowing orbs peering over the edge. Regarding her like a specimen, Emily met their inhuman gaze, too numb for further fear. Let's end this, she whispered. Come finish it. The orbs blinked once, then withdrew. An unnatural voice echoed through the woods with a chuckle like grinding stone. No, little morsel. Your suffering will feed me much longer if you live.
Now scurry home and spread word of what you've unleashed. The entity's laughter faded into the night. Shaking violently, Emily fumbled her phone back to life. By some miracle, it still worked. With the glow to guide her, she began the long climb from the ravine, leaving bloody handprints on the rocks. As dawn light filtered through the trees, she stumbled free of the woods. Sirens wailed in the distance, coming to investigate the disturbance. Emily collapsed into the arms of the paramedics, babbling about the horrors in the Miller Woods. But she knew in her shattered mind that this was only the beginning. The entity's words had ensured its dark influence would spread, and some mysteries were better left buried with doors never opened and paths left untaken. The misty woods would claim new victims to feed its eternal hunger. The nightmare was only beginning.